So we will continue. So we discussed CDFs, properties of CDFs. So we said that uh, CDFs uh, have the have four fundamental properties. They start off at minus infinity. They start off at zero, end up at plus one at plus infinity, and everywhere in between it's monotonically non-decreasing, and they have to be right continuous. Right. Conversely, I also orally mentioned that. If you give me any function at all which has these four properties, it will be the CDF of some random variable. Okay, so this converse result, the proof is available in Grimet and Sturzaker, for example. It you can ex explicitly construct a random variable. So, given any function with these properties, you can explicitly construct a random variable whose CDF is the function you want. Okay, so these four are the only fundamental properties, so to speak. There are no more properties that generally define a random variable uh, CDF. So today uh, we will move on to types of random variables. Okay. So remember that a random variable. So you are looking at some probability space omega f p, right, and the real line sitting here, and your random variable maps each elementary outcome to a unique real number x of omega. Right, so this will be x of omega. What we said is that pre-images of uh, Borel sets are f-measurable, and that essentially implied that there is a probability law p(x) right uh, from the Borel sigma algebra to zero one, which is a probability measure on RBR. Right, uh, effectively. The random variable pushes the measure p onto the real line, and you have a measure induced measure is p x probability law p x. Now, uh, you classify random variables as belonging to various types based on the nature of measure induced on the real line, namely based on the nature of p x. Okay. Now I have to tell you what nature of p x is. What what do you mean by how many types of measures there are and so on, right? So it take so it turns out that there is a, a very fundamental theorem in uh, measure theory that says that there are only three fundamental types of measure on the real line. Any probability measure on the real line will have to be will are only for fundamentally of three types, or they can be of some combinations thereof. Okay, so you're already familiar with uh, two, I believe, right? So one is what you call a discrete random variable, right? That is something you are used to. Uh, there is, and then you are also used to what is known as a continuous random variable. Right? These things I will define uh, very precisely, but you for for now you know colloquially roughly that you know that there are discrete random variables and continuous random variables, and you also know that you can have a Mixed mixture of these two, right? The mixture is not a fundamental type of a random variable, right? It's just putting this and that together, right? You can put on uh, maybe on a discrete set you put some probability and on some use and then you put some probability on some interval or something. Now, but there's actually a third fundamental type of uh, probability measure uh, on the real line called a singular measure, singular random variable. Okay, uh, the singular random variables you probably would not have encountered so far. For the, for the reason they are perfectly valid probability measures, they are neither discrete nor are they continuous. In fact, they are not mixtures either. There is a fundamentally new type of a probability measure that you would probably not have encountered so far. Okay, uh, the reason is the, the reason you don't really encounter them so much is they are mostly of academic interest. They are very bizarre. Okay, they are, they don't have any useful applications in particular, right? So there are totally uh, three types. Of so there is discrete uh, random variables. Uh, there is continuous random variables. I have not defined any of this. I am just picking it out. Okay. 
and then there is a third fundamental type called singular anime wave. And there is a very uh, basic result in measure theory called Lebesgue's decomposition theorem, which says that all probability measures on R, any p x you consider, will have to be only one of these three type or mixtures thereof. Okay. So, how many types will you get totally? So, you can have this or that or that pure or you can have these two together, these two together, these two together or all three together in general. right? So, each any measure on any probability measure on R can in fact, be decomposed into a discrete component, a continuous component and a singular component. Okay, this is what this famous theorem called Lebesgue's decomposition theorem says. Okay, it is not a theorem we will prove. Okay, it's something that it's just good to know. I mean, again, it's a fairly mathematical result, and you will not worry so much about it. All we we, we need to know is there is no more. There's only these three fundamental types and mixtures thereof. All measures, probability measures, on R only fall into these three categories or mixtures thereof. Okay. So there are seven types of random variables on R. Okay, not three. You are used to three, right? Discrete, continuous, mixtures of discrete and continuous. In fact, there is one more fundamental type of random variable called singular random variable, which you would not have encountered because it's very bizarre and not very practically useful. But it's nevertheless a valid probability measure, singular random variable. Are there any questions? I have not told you what they are, right? I mean, I have to define one by one. I will define. So, shall we move on to discrete random variable? So, the nicest type of random variables are discrete random variable. Just like the easiest type of probability measures were discrete prob discrete probability spaces. Uh, so, discrete random variables are also the easiest to study. Okay. So, a random variable x is said to be discrete definition. If there exists a countable P subset of R so a countable Borel set okay so this must be Borel Uh, well, so what did I say? Discrete random variable. There is a countable. Actually, this is a countable set, so it's automatically Borel. So I don't even have to say this. Uh, so such that, what do I want to say? P x of E equal to one. Okay. So actually, I don't even strictly have to say this because it's implied by the fact that it is a countable set. He all countable sets are Borel, right? So I was about to say, oh, he has to be Borel because I'm talking about its P x, but the fact that it's countable means it's automatically Borel, right? That's all there is. Okay. So what is a random variable? What is a discrete random variable? It's a random variable which puts all its probability, the probability of one, rests on a countable set. Okay. So there exists some countable set E whose pre-image has probability 1 right okay see the one little the way I see i could have see i didn't quite say that the range of the random variable is countable right also i mean that's also not terrible that's that's also an okay definition except that this definition allows for some measure zeros some points of measure zero here being mapped to outside E also. 
right. So, there, there exists some countable set E whose pre image is not necessarily a sample space, but some set of probability 1, right. That is what that means, okay. Which means that probability 1 the random variable takes values in a countable set, right. Yes. Huh, the only difference, yeah. So, I was so I so let me say in other words, x takes values in a countable set. set almost surely right with probability 1 it takes values in a countable set. Only it takes, so, you can write E as let us say E 1 E 2 dot 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 is a countable set after all and with probability 1 it only takes those discrete set of values right. There may be some omegas which in some set of probability 0 which takes values outside the set E which is why I did not say that the range is necessarily just a countable set right they are almost the same, but not quite the same, because there could be some measure 0 set here, right, some measure 0 set here which maps outside E, right, but as long as it has probability 0, it is ok. The sample space is omega, so this is a random variable x, so this is a random variable from omega to r as usual, ok. So, what I am saying is that it is a discrete random variable if the set of values it takes in R belongs to a countable set with probability 1, that is it. P x of omega, yeah, no, 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 P x is only defined for Borel sets, the subsets of R, right. Sample space into 1. Correct. So what sample space we give? Px of not sample space, Px of r is 1, right. Px of r is always 1 because it is a probability measured on r. I am saying that all that probability rests on, see this r has probability 1, there is no doubt about it because it is a probability measure. I am saying all that probability rests on a countable set, right. So, the probability of the random variable taking values outside this countable set is 0. Okay, which is a little bit different from saying that the range of the random variable is only countable, slightly different because you could have some 0 measure sets which map to outside E, right. Fine, is this clear to everybody? So, in particular, if you write E, see E is a countable set, so it has a listing, right. So, if I write E as e 1 e 2 dot dot dot, it could be finite or countably infinite, if it is finite I will write e 1 e 2 e n, it is countably infinite it is e 1 e 2 dot dot dot, let us say it is e 1 e 2 dot dot dot, then I essentially have that p x of e is 1, right. So, but p x of e, see these are all singletons, right, these e i's are E i's are just real numbers, right. So, what can I say? So, P of P x of E can be written as the sum of P x of these singletons, why? So, yeah, because it is countable, uh, countably additive, no. Uh, so, I of course, I am assuming that the E i's are, uh, are distinct, ok. Uh, if you just write E i belong to R, distinct. Right, so then you have p x of e, which is one, right, is equal to sum over i p x of what? The singleton e i. Right. So, in other words this can be written as sum over i equals 1 through infinity 
probability that probability of omega. So, this is probability measure on R I can transfer it to the pro probability measure on the original sample space and write probability of omega such that x of omega equal to E i right, but I will no longer write that I will only write x is equal to E i okay. If you want you write I mean if you prefer x i you can write x i here okay x is equal to x i is probably a little nicer right okay. So, this discrete random variable has all the probability sitting on this countable set and there is some and if you specify the probability of each of the singletons values that it takes you essentially specified the entire measure p uh, entire measure right entire probability law right. So, if you if you give me any Borel set on R what would it be what would be its probability law I mean probability p x. So, for any for any uh, b in b p x of b under this particular discrete uh, measure will be sum over uh, how do I write this sum over all the i such that e i belongs to b probability that x is equal to E i. I just have to this is a complicated notation I am simply saying that you look at all the E i s that exist in your Borel set simply add their probabilities ok that is all you need to do to find the probability measure of any Borel set ok. Is that clear? Any questions? So, uh, discrete argument is constant. If I is it a constant because uh, uh, if I take omega is equal to 0, 1 and then uh, script of is bold uh, space, where is the uh, uniform is 0, 1. Mm -hmm. So, can we just uh, define discrete probability uh, You can define a discrete random. So, omega can be anything. See, omega does not have to be countable or uncountable or any such thing. I am just saying that the random variable has to take values in a countable set with probability 1. So, you could have omega can be 0 1 for example, but the random variable could simply be some indicator random variable for example, is clearly a discrete random variable right because it only takes two values right. So, you can have indicator of any set on 0 1 so many Borel set on 0 1 that will be a discrete random variable right. So, omega can be uncountable also no problem. So, is this ok? So, generally so if you specify this right then you are you are basically specified the probability law completely because I have explicitly written down the probability law for every Borel set in terms of that guy right. So, this thing is called the probability mass function ok. So, definition the function little p x which is equal to the probability that x is equal to x is called the. So, this is for uh, prob p x of x p x of little x ok it is called the probability mass function of 
x. See this definition you can make for any random variable, right? I mean, I'm just so after all, x is equal to x is a. I mean, this is a singleton set, and you can always talk about its probability, and you can define the probability mass function for any random variable. Nothing stops you from doing that. But for a discrete random variable, the nice thing is that the probability mass function completely specifies its probability law, right? So, if x is discrete, so what we have shown here is that if x is a discrete random variable, the probability mass function, this is PMF, completely describes the probability law of x as and as we have shown here right you should probably just write this down here okay because it specifies the probability of any borel set right So, this for the values that it does not take, it, so this will be 0, I mean if outside the set E, right, this guy will be 0, no problem, right. You can define it for all real numbers, but it will only be non 0 for these E i's, okay. You can define it for any kind of a random variable. I am just saying that for the discrete random variable, it captures everything there is to capture about the random variable for continuous or singular it will not capture actually it captures almost nothing okay if the probability law or probability mass function only captures the probability law for discrete random variables okay so uh, that deals with the probability law how will the cdf of a discrete random variable look it will have a number of steps, right. So, it will be, it, it will have several discontinuities. So, if you are trying to plot for this random variable, so if I try to plot f x of x against x, so maybe my E i's are like that, right. So, may just for so if my E 4's are like, my E's are like that then uh, it will start off at 0 and at each point it will jump by an amount p x of e i right. So, it will let us say that there is nothing here there is no e i is here just for the sake of argument. Then this guy will start from 0 jump solid dot here hollow dot here right remain flat until you see the next e i and again jump solid dot here, hollow dot here, so on, right. Here again jump, hollow dot, jump, that is it, right. This is how the, so and that will be 1. If it is, I mean I am only plotting for finite number of E i s, right, but if there are countably many E i s, countably uh, infinite E i s, then there will be countably infinitely many discontinuities, right. Okay. So, that is how a typically how a CDF of the discrete random variable looks. So, I usually see the if you specify so on the height of each of these jumps for example, this jump will be p x of e 4 right. So, each jump corresponds to the probability that x is equal to that e i right. So, if you specify the p m f you can get the c d f right you because you simply put in that much jump.
this is the CDF capital F x right. See the mass function is you can define it for all x it will be 0 except at the E i s where it takes value equal to P x of E i. It will not have jumps it will simply be like sticks right it will just be like a discrete right uh -huh. all right. So, remember see I mean this discrete random variable can actually be fairly complicated in the sense that this E could be rationals in that case it is not nicely separated sticks standing everywhere right it could it could it you could have a distribution over the rationals right it may not be as simple as you think it may not be as nice as you think here right you can put some measures on the rationals in 0 1 right you can do it if you want right. For example, if you want if you want to put a measure on the rationals in 0 1, one valid probability measure would be to simply arrange the rationals call q n your nth rational in 0 1 and say probability the probability x is equal to q, q n is equal to some 1 by n square or something like that appropriately scaled. So, that it adds up to 1 right that is a discrete random variable right because all the probability measure is on the rationals see what I am saying, but your CDF will not CDF will be very bizarre it will not be like this right you have to it will jump at all these rational points correct. So, although you are used to some nice discrete CDFs like this, uh, but discrete random variables can also be a little bit uh, a little bit counterintuitive or bizarre in the sense that it may not look like nice steps going up. But the random variables that are practically used often are in fact quite nice the discrete discrete random variables. Uh, so, I will give some examples if there are no more questions on the theoretical bit I will give some examples. So, you will know you will notice that I have deliberately been avoiding examples right. So, I want to keep a certain level of abstraction going so that you get the the abstract understanding first right you can always give examples later, but I want that abstraction to you know keep that thread to be going all along right. So, now I will give examples okay of some popular uh, dis discrete distributions. So, in all of this, so I am going to give examples of discrete random variables okay. So, I will I will not mention what the probability space is I will only talk about the R B R P X okay. I told you that once you have the random variable and your probability law it you can just if you do not have to worry about omega f p anymore right. So, in order to describe a random variable I just need to supply p x to you right what the probability law is to you and in fact, these are discrete random variables. So, I will just supply the p m f to you right the probability mass function then I have described the random variable ok. The most elementary example is that of a Bernoulli random variable So, this takes so this takes values so this e is simply 0 and 1 okay it only takes the set e has only two values 0 and 1 and p x of 0 is equal to 1 minus p and p x of well you can have it uh, p x of uh, 1 is equal to p where p is some number between Okay. So, this is Bernoulli random variable is a random variable that is essentially it is a binary valued random variable 
and it takes value 1 with probability p and takes value 0 with probability 1 minus p. What sample space it is coming from is not very relevant here right. If you want you can take the sample space uh, some 0 1 with Borel with uniform measure and say that if your random variable is in 0 p it is 1 or something like that. If your omega is in 0 1 0 p you can say it is 1 right. But that is not important, you do not worry about what omega f p it is, this is what finally produces on the real line. Okay. And clearly uh, this is it satisfies that this plus that must be equal to 1 which it is right. And if you want to find the probability of any Borel set on R under this for this random variable what would you do? Hmm? So, if I give you some see this this is something you have seen multiple times before, but now if I give you a Borel set and I say what p x of b is what would you do? Uh, look yeah look whether the, the, the Borel set contain if the Borel does set does not contain any of these points the probability will be 0. If it contains only 0 its probability will be 1 minus p, if it contains only 1 it will be p, if it contains both it will be 1 right that is it for every Borel set you can specify. So, for example, this you can look at as the uh, number you can toss a coin with tossing a coin with probability p and you are simply counting the number of heads. If it is 1 heads probability p 0 heads probability 1 minus p and this is as simple as it gets. Any questions? The second example I want to give is a uniform measure on a discrete set, uniform measure on a finite set. So, if you have a set E equal to E 1, E 2 dot 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 E n, so uniform random variable I should say actually. Uh, on a finite set. So, you, your set E is now finite it is not even countably infinite then you the random variable that I am talking about. So, that is your E then your P x of E i is equal to 1 over n for all i okay. for all i equal to 1 2 dot 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 n. Okay. So, if there are uh, if you are simply looking at so, if you are just tossing a die and your random variable is uh, that the trivial random variable that simply tells you the face of the face on the die uh, this this will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 and you are putting a 1 over 6 probability on each of these elements ok. So, this is called uniform random variable you can only do it for a finite set right if you do it for a countably infinite set it would not work out right because I mean they would not add up to 0 I mean they would not add up to 1. Uh, so, it, it cannot work out on a no, for a countable set you cannot put a you cannot there is no way to define a uniform there is you cannot put if you put any non zero mass or at any point it will go to infinity right, but if you put 0 mass it is a countable set it will still it will go to 0 right there is no nothing you can do. So, countably infinite is a no go for uniform measure if you have an uncountable set you can put a uniform measure that is a different story right. Is there any practical situation in which this comes uniformly There is no you cannot do it there is no way to define a uniform uh, random variable on a 
countable set, countably infinite set. Okay, so that's also a simple example. Let us move on to. Uh, let should I give you? A, so let's say I will give you a example of a geometric random variable. So the geometric random variable is has the values it takes are in fact uh, basically n okay it takes values in n okay which is a countably infinite subset of r right so that's the first one you're encountering which is this this is finite that is finite but this is infinite countably infinite so now for each so what do i have to do I have to specify the probability mass for for each each natural number that is all right. So, I have to say that P x of k which is nothing but the probability of x is equal to k everywhere right k is equal to for the geometric random variable uh, it is uh, 1 minus P raised to k minus 1. times p where again p is some parameter between so k uh, is in n and p is b, p is in 0 1 so and in order to verify that this is a valid pmf you have to verify that the summation has to go to 1 right and if you sum this you get a geometric series right which and then you will very trivially see that it goes to 1 and that is why it is called a geometric random variable because in order to if you sum this up you get a geometric series ok yes. Yes that is that is the interpretation as I just said right you you can just toss a n faced die or something. Ah, you say x of omega is omega it is a trivial random variable right. So, here um, so a geometric random variable it puts a geometric measure on r on n for one thing right we have already encountered geometric measure on n right and this is how it looks and uh, it, it has the interpretation that if you have uh, so, you, you have number of if you have what is known as independent Bernoulli random variables right you have not come to independence of random variables yet. So, if you let us say so this is like a tossing a coin and you are tossing a toss a number of coins uh, independent in independently uh, the first the probability that this is the probability that you will encounter your first head in the kth toss ok that is the interpretation this has. So, the number of tosses you have to wait until you see a head right that is the distribution it has a geometric distribution if the coin tosses are the if these are independent coin tosses right. But for now I am just talking about its PMF ok. Any questions on this? Another related random variable is called the binomial random variable. It takes values again. So, here the set E is 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. N, okay, which is a finite set, and p x of k is equal to n choose k p power k one minus p power n minus k for uh, k in E and p n. 
0 1. n choose 0 is taken as 1 ok. You know what n choose k is right. So, this again is closely related to the Bernoulli random variable. If you have a number of these independent coin tosses, uh, it is if you have n such independent coin tosses, uh, this is the distribution of the this is the it this corresponds to the total number of heads right the, this this corresponds to probability of getting k heads okay in independent coin tosses okay so this this and this are very closely related in fact bernoulli leads to both geometric and uh, binomial in a very direct way so there are see there are so many examples okay there's negative binomial multinomial uh, it is it is a huge I am not going to give you all possible examples of this discrete random variables I will just give you one more ok. Poisson. Here your E is a 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. It is whole numbers, E is all of whole numbers, which is a countably infinite set, and you have Px of k is equal to E power minus lambda lambda power k by k factorial where for k equal to 0 1 2 dot 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 and lambda is some parameter that is strictly positive ok. And 0 factorial is taken as 1. This is your Poisson random variable. And this also you can verify is a random variable because if you sum over all k, that is simply your expansion of e power k, right. So, e power minus e power lambda. So, you will get 1. So, these are some popular, I mean, very, very uh, routinely encountered examples of discrete random variables. This is by no means all, right? You can any you take any discrete set you like, any countable set you like, and you put any numbers on that countable set which add up to one. That is a valid. This that's a very valid. That's it, right? Discrete random variable. So if you want another example, I'm if you a nameless example you want, maybe it has a name. So if you want uh, e, let's say e equal to uh, n again. Let us say Px of k is equal to 6 over pi squared 1 upon over k squared. Right, this is a valid PMF. Because that summation goes to pi square over 6, right. So, that is a valid PMF. I, I do not know, it probably has a name, I do not know the name if it has one, ok. Just something I made up, ok. That is also a very discrete random variable. Are there any questions? So these are the simplest kind of random variables, ok. No questions? Ok. So, if there are no more questions, I will stop and next week we will move to continuous random variables. <coughs>